How's it going, everybody? It is Ethan or Arnold Coder. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Build Twitter. This is episode 44. In this episode, we take the Redux slice that we modified last episode with that great async dunk, and we're going to go ahead and import the use dispatch as well as that reducer method or that action method, whatever you want to call it, from that slice and be able to actually send data over to our backend. We also do a couple other odds and ends to be able to notify the user when an email is already in use and actually make them go back and fix that up. So let's go ahead and hop Hop into VS Code and I'll show you guys how we did this. So let's go ahead and hop into register form 3.tsx. We'll go ahead and want to import our use reducer. So go ahead and do that. Use reducer. Uh, or actually, no, use dispatch. I'm sorry. I don't know why I was calling it use reducer. We also need the register user from there as well. So import. It's going to be called register user from our redux user slice and i think that's all we technically need so now we need to go ahead and oh we also need the app dispatch from our store all right so now what we can do is we can go ahead and set up our dispatch so const dispatch is equal to um, an app dispatch and we're going to say equal to use dispatch and then we actually need a function to submit that user so const submit user equal to do a quick arrow function and we're going to say const user is equal to we'll have a first name colon state dot first name we'll have a last name which is state dot last name not what I wanted we'll have an email this is going to be state.email. And then finally, we're going to have a DOB. So I want to convert this to a string. We're going to have our back ticks, dollar sign, and this will be parsed in by Java. So this will be state.dob.year dash dollar sign. This will be state.dob.month dash dollar sign state.dob dot day we're gonna say year month day we can console.log hey we are attempting to register a user and then finally we want to dispatch and actually send that so register user pass in the user we wanted to we could have made the the register user a global interface so we could use anywhere but it's fine. This works. Now, of course, instead of running an alert, what we actually want to do is go ahead and call the submit user. So submit user. And now from this point on, anytime we actually go ahead and add, uh, hit that button with user information, it's actually going to send that user over to the back end to store it into a database. So now what we want to go ahead and do is if we have an issue with like a name being already taken or something, we want to go ahead and make sure the user knows that. So what we're going to go ahead and do is go into our validated display really quick. And we're going to allow it to take in an optional valid Boolean that will kind of say, hey, make sure that you're, you're actually inputting data that hasn't been already stored in our database so now inside of a validated display we're going to go ahead and put a valid and this is going to be optional and boolean so again this is going to be whether or not the username or email in this case is valid and we're going to pass valid in here so next what we're going to want to do is go ahead and go into our valid here and now instead of true we're going to say valid question mark so this is essentially saying hey is valid present if it is we're going to say not valid question mark true colon false so to start out and we need another set of these guys and we might still be missing one so this one goes here oh wait what did i mess up oh we need one more true all right, so essentially what this is saying is if we have a valid value here, so if it's not like undefined, for example, and then if it's not valid, return true or false, and then this. So essentially it's just going to, or it should spit out the same exact outcome. So if we go ahead and say unknown, and then say coder, and say mail at email.com, 
Put in a random birthday. Next. Next. It looks just fine. Everything's good. We can come back here. Everything is fine and dandy. Now let's go ahead and modify the register form three to actually be able to display when an error happens. To display whenever an error actually happens, the issue is typically gonna be with the email. So the email is already going to exist. So we're going to go ahead and take in that error from the state. So state.error, if it is true, let's go ahead and make some ternary statements fun. So we're gonna say a P with a class name equal to reg dash step dash three dash error and we'll say the email you specified is in use please use a different one i actually don't know what twitter said uh it says because i didn't pay attention i didn't try this so that's my bad or we'll have nothing so again very simple we're gonna have to go ahead and create a very very quick css error message here so we'll go ahead and come into our css for this and write the css reg dash step dash three dash error and hopefully i spelled that correctly let's double check um red step three error cool so now inside of here we're just going to say color is red so obviously there's an issue we're going to say font size is pretty small at 13 pixels we're going to say the font weight is 300 margin left is going to be slightly off the right left side uh, not perfectly lined up about 10 pixels and then finally margin top, just add a little bit of space above about five pixels. So now if we wanted to, we'd have to go ahead and fix it or, or I'd have to essentially make it fail. There is one more thing that I wanted to do inside of the step one button um, inside of the dispatch. So let me come back into register step one, apparently, and register step one. And what we want to do is whenever they click next, we want to dispatch to, to false error. That way we know that they updated it so we can try again. So dispatch is going to go ahead and update register. And inside here, we're going to pass in the name of the value you want to update is error. And we also want to say the value is now false. So essentially what this is saying is whenever they get kicked back into this page to set up a new email, because once already in use, um, it's going to say, okay, they changed the email. Let's go ahead and change the name or the error back to false. Of course, I probably should have checked to make sure that they actually filled it out and changed it, but that's fine. It is what it is. So let's make sure that this actually works. So let's go ahead and sign up. Fingers crossed. It says that I signed up. Let's check here. I don't see any errors or anything inside the console. We can check our dbeaver. Let's go ahead and I'm going to go into here. Remember, I just recreated this. So let me refresh the schema. Hopefully the tables are there. Cool. Users. And let's check the data. We see unknown coder is there. We haven't set up anything else. User ID says two. That's fine. And theoretically, if we come back into our code, we can't go backwards right now. We have to do is just refresh. So let's go ahead and say unknown coder once again. Of course, you can uh, register the same username and password. That's fine. Uh, we'd probably realistically, instead of doing it this way, we'd probably want a, a WebSocket or something, but I said mail at email.com. So let's go ahead and use that again. So mail at email.com and put in a random date again. That's fine. Next, next. So now theoretically it should pop up saying, hey, the email you specified is in use. Please use a different one. We come back here and we can change it. So now we're ready for the next step in the register modal. So let's go ahead and get into that. Unfortunately, that's going to be it for today. If you guys enjoyed, please stick around for the next episode by hitting that subscribe button. You'll know exactly when it comes out, especially at that bell icon. If you did enjoy the content today, please sure leave a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, leave a thumbs down. Either way, it helps out with the algorithm all the same. And finally, if you have any suggestions or feedback for me, make sure you leave a comment down below. With that being said, I appreciate you all for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode. Peace out, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.